perfect homemade hash browns from scratch. Let's make something. Hey everybody, welcome back to the ranch. Due to this wonderful Arkansas weather, I'm stuck inside today, so there was no Tooltip Tuesday video. Today I'm going to show you how I make hash browns from scratch at home, and they're perfect. You will need potatoes, obviously. Wash them. I leave the skins on. It's up to you. And if you don't know how to wash a potato, you don't belong in the kitchen. We prefer cast iron, as you might be able to tell. Skillet of your choice, whatever. Spatula. Obviously, if you're using one of those chemically coated non-stick pieces of crap, then use a plastic spatula. A cookie sheet. No, we're not going to bake them. You'll see. Butter. I use unsalted butter. You only need about two or three tablespoons to do this. Just depends on how much you're making. A grater. You can use a food processor, use what you've got. A strainer and a bowl. This is the way I do it. You can use a, a colander that you use for pasta or spaghetti noodles or whatever. That'll work too. Olive oil. I prefer the extra virgin olive oil. Use what you want. A breadboard of some kind. I like these little plastic ones because you can curl them up like that and dump your stuff right into a bowl or pan or whatever you're doing. And a ridiculous amount of paper towels. Why do I do this to myself? I hope that was funny. All right, go ahead and shred your potatoes. I don't, I, I, I get the eyes and the, and the blemishes and stuff off of them first. I leave the skins on, whatever. I don't know what it is about potatoes these days. The quality seems to be going down the, down the drain. You know, if I was smart, I would do this over a bowl, but I'm not a smart guy, so there. So you always wind up with a nub left, this whatever. Pig food. I'm not going to say it. All right, put your shredded potatoes in there. Why in here, you may ask? This is the trick. You have to wrench the starch out of them, and then you lay them out on paper towels on a cookie sheet and pat them dry. That's the trick. in there and rinse them real well. Stir them around. Make sure you get all over the place. See that? Yummy! That's the stuff that causes mushy hash browns. Keep doing, I keep doing this until it runs clear. Down in there, give it a good bath. That's good enough. Want to 
So for you numbers people, that's three times. Just rinse them three times. That should do the trick. Try to dry to get as much of the water out of there as you can. Give it a shake, give it a stir. The handy part about having a bowl is this just sits in there. See how much water's coming still coming out of there? Need to hold this up so that it will continue to drain. We're going to need them as dry as possible. Lay it on some paper towels. Kind of thick, you know, kind of like you would with bacon. Give that one more shake for good measure. Gosh, look at the water in there. Spread them out thin. The drier, the better. The layers on top, pat them down, squeeze them, squeeze the water out. You do not want water. Water is your enemy. Well, actually, the starch is, but the water is not helping anything either. All right, let that sit while you're while you get your pan ready. And I'll take you over to the stove. All right, pan's good and hot. The handle's getting good and warm. It's time to start getting ready to cook this stuff. Just pick up that uh, top layer of paper towels. You're going to lose some. Some of it's going to stick. You can spend all day picking it off, but ain't nobody got time for that. Two tablespoons of butter. Put that in there. And the butter is going to want to burn. My buddy Gordon called me a trick. Put a little bit of olive oil in there with it. It helps prevent the butter from burning. Adds a little bit of flavor. So get that going around. Get the uh, olive oil and the butter mixed together. Now that's gonna be good. I'll try to cook them all at once. Get you a decent handful. Because you're going to put them in there, you're going to flatten them out. Like that. Flatten them out. Now keep them together. I, I got to turn the pan. The, the stove is level. But the top of the stove, the top of the range, is kind of dished in the middle. So all of the burners lean toward the center. It's, it's crazy. So I need this to get that good fry when, when it hits. There. But I need the butter and the olive oil to be kind of cooled up down there. If your stove is level, don't worry about it. when it's time to flip them because they'll be kind of stiff on the bottom. It'll be more of one hunk of something instead of a whole pile of shredded stuff. It'll, the whole thing will move. Salt and pepper to taste. You can do that at any point while it, once it hits the pan. Ah, there it goes. That one's almost ready to flip. Now, each batch of these that you do, um, I would recommend adding a little bit more butter and a little bit more olive oil, letting that come back up the temp because these hash browns absorb the, the butter and the oil something fierce. 
which is fine and that means it's already on in the potatoes so when you flip them you've got your you've got your oil in the butt. Right, I'm gonna try and flip this one. Oh almost <laughs> I'm gonna wait on the other one. There we go. That's better. It's been a while since I've done these. Hash brown is a perishable skill. So practice often. Put them on plate. Let's see how they turn out. Ooh, look at that. That's good. Sizzle. All right, so that's how that's how I make hash browns. If you want to make them at home and you're having trouble with them being all nasty and soggy and like mush, I found this in a book somewhere or online or whatever. Maybe it was just a premonition. I don't know. Let's dig in. All right, I'm not gonna make this a mukbang but I'm gonna tear it up. A couple of things. Um, I use extra virgin olive oil. I use unsalted real butter. That seems to work best. I've got high blood pressure and I've kind of gotten away from a lot of the salty stuff. Um, I like butter and it's actually not as bad for you as you may think, but the salt in the butter is not good for you if you have high blood pressure. So I go with the unsalted. That way I can control the, the amount of salt that's in the meals that I make. So there you go. Be good, do good, and do the best you can with what you've got. Bad guy on YouTube eating food. Okay. Stuff on the internet today. <laughs> 